everybody and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Now, this is a story about how my life got turned upside down and now I can't do this for That sucks. Good. I'm glad that you cannot do this. I was starting to feel uh, like, I don't know, personally ashamed of you. <laughs> and also brony reviewer Silver Quill. I am so disappointed. Okay. Why? Right. In this episode... I don't know what you... And that Will Smith impersonation. <laughs> hey. Join the group. Join the group. Join the group. Oh my gosh. I tried. I'm not good at that song. This one I... is going to be fun. I'm suddenly more hip than you. That shouldn't be possible. I'm uber white. Uh, well, I'm Asian. You, you have fluorescent tan, don't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the Man, one that I have. Mayonnaise on Wonder Bread in a in a blizzard being eaten by a polar bear is less white than I am. On the North Pole <laughs> of Mars. What? Mars is yellow, yellow. Oh, well, that will be for you then, Norman. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, and today, if we can get through the epithets and all that, we are reviewing episode 10 of season 5, overall episode number 101, Title Princess Spike, with story by Jason Thiessen and Jim Miller, and script by Neil Dusedo. That's, that's a newcomer for this show, apparently. So in this episode, and I am going to read the synopsis straight from the wiki, things go haywire when Spike starts making decisions under Princess Twilight's name. There is a big summit of all the different uh, places from Equestria, and Princess Twilight has... Work herself into exhaustion, yet again, because that's what tw Twilight does best. That and making improvised pillows out of, out of anything. So, Cadence tasks Spike with making sure that Twilight gets her rest in, and that she sleeps calmly and well. And then one thing leads to another, and Spike starts making decisions on Twilight's behalf. So, guys, what did you think of this episode? The buzz that I've been uh, getting from the grapevine about this one hasn't been all that positive. Is that justified? What do you think? Uh, Silver, you go first. So disappointed. Meh. Uh, I think the, I think the negative buzz is justified. This episode, it has been the low point of the season thus far. Uh, like I say, Apple loses most wanted. I, I commented it, it lost a lot of energy because the focus was all over the place. But you still had likable characters. You still had events going on that really got you invested. And Troubleshoes was a likable guy. I don't like anybody in this cartoon, in this episode. I mean, Spike, okay. He's had some better episodes lately. I think the Crystal, uh, the Equestria Games was a good episode for him. I think that Inspiration Manifestation was a great episode because he solved his own problem for a change. Now, this feels like a backslide to uh, Just for Sidekicks or Spike at Your Service. It's it's making many of the similar mistakes that uh, Spike episodes have made in the past. And I kind of wonder why it is, why that is. Why they keep using similar plot elements... But they, even though they usually end up disappointing a lot of the, well, okay, admittedly the brony viewership, which is not the intended audience. Uh, but I, I can't imagine that kids are really buying into this any more than adults. Uh, but aside from Spike, Princess Cadence, what a wasted opportunity. Such a terrible waste. And the ponies at the, of the, uh, friendship conference or summit, uh, that line, the princess is always right. I die, I die a little on the inside. <laughs> Especially because it's not true. Um, and, and then even the plot elements, this, sorry, forgive me. I, I am trying to see through my rage. The biggest thing that will always turn me off to an episode, and this has been consistent with every episode I haven't liked in the show is that it's trying to tell me what to think, but it's showing me something different. In A Cantalot Wedding, part one, they say, oh, you should love Shining Armor and Cadence. They are the best characters ever. And I see a big brother who's never been there for his sister. 
so I can't like him. Uh, in putting your hoof down, oh, this is all our Iron Will's fault. He's the one who corrupted Fluttershy. No, Fluttershy made her own mistakes. He gave bad advice, but she acted on it. There's no passing the buck there. And yeah. here, and here, it's Spike is abusing his relationship with the princess, and that's causing all these troubles. No, he he got people to stop making noise so the princess could sleep per the orders of Princess Cadence. And that had unfortunate consequences. The abuse uh, of power didn't come until later, and it never had an impact. So, yeah, I, this, I will have even more to say about this episode, but there was not a lot there to really entice me. I, I don't think I can go long like you did, but... Yeah, hey, but you please, think that's do long. go, Norman, do go. <laughs> you think that's long? Get, order lunch. You're in for a riot, son. Aye, aye, aye. No, I have coffee but, with me. I don't have a problem. <laughs> uh, I don't know. To me, this episode was an interesting take of abusing, abusing your friend's position of power, which is an interesting tale to tell. But for the target audience, which is, I'm going to go and say five year olds to probably 12 or and higher, uh, as a lesson, this is very confusing if their target is that. But as an overall story, it's an interesting one to tell. But, uh, how to put this? What you explained there and how things happen, eh, it's really, really... Oof, how do I put this? It's grasping at straws. That's, that's what I can say. It's an interesting story to tell. Like I do see interesting points. I do like some of the story elements. But when you over think some aspects like why is he abusing the powers again? Like, did we establish Spike? You're not that greedy anymore. It could be the power go going over his head, but eh, it's hard for me to be on Spike's side this episode. I am the simpleton on this one. I don't think I... I don't think I have that much of a problem with the episode. But then again, this this show does have a distinction between episodes that are straight up, uh, straightforward, this is something that we're going to talk about without putting a lot of slapstick into it, or this is something that we're going to talk about putting a lot of slapstick into it. Mm -hmm. uh, usually the slapsticky episodes belong to Dave Polsky, because he's the one that is able to sell slapstick and make it at least somewhat entertaining. I mean, look at the uh, Appaloosa's Most Wanted episode. I think, I think this this uh, Princess Spike one, uh, all the physical humor and all the visual humor is not all that well done, except for one uh, domino effect at the end that we're going to talk about when we get to it, mm -hmm. that pretty much combines every single decision that Spike did wrong ended up biting him in the butt. But the thing that kills me with this one is the lesson, like you guys said. Not only is it confusing... But the punishment that Spikes receives for his actions is not enough, mm -hmm. and I don't mean it. I don't mean it in the way that some some people overanalyzing the show might say it. It's like no, like from a writing's point of view, this is not a good karmic response. There is no balance here. So yeah, I will. Yeah, I will. You know what? Now that I hear you guys talk about this one, I say this is the lowest point of the season so far. But that doesn't really mean a lot to me. Well. I, I'm not saying I'm going to retract what I said, but I do like this episode. To me, this episode was entertaining. I do enjoy it. But when we think about it as, uh, in a lesson standpoint where Spike did a bad thing, did he get punished for it? Kind of. But was it the <laughs> proper punishment that he deserved? Probably. But it's still a story where Things could have been told better. See, that's funny because I, I don't even feel like Spike did wrong. I think he, at least at first, did what did the best he could with the information he had. Yeah. And it's and yet everyone's saying, well, I'm really going to get into this, but this is a big my big problem I have with this episode is how it presents the status of princess. Mm. And and in that light, I just want to harken back to. Uh, a press release before the start of season four, where they talked about with Princess Twilight, every little girl wants to be a princess. 
But not every girl can be a princess, but you can live up to the ideals that come with being a princess. And I know that's a sales pitch, in essence, but to borrow a line from the Nostalgia Critic talking about the Princess Diaries, don't claim that you're helping educate or enrich someone only to only to take the easy way out with a, a marketing device. <laughs> don't, you you wanna you wanna push the princess ideal to sell toys? Okay, but don't tell me you're doing it for a kid's benefit. We're doing so, it because we have the moral ground. Yay! Yeah, so I'll I'll expand on this as we get into the review proper, but. No, yeah. no, that rage waits within. Nah, okay, nah, nah. Let, let's get into it, because we shouldn't keep the beast uh, hanging. We should let the beast out. Oh, no. You need a lion throw for this one. <laughs> Meow. Meow. <laughs> Meow. So, the, uh, the episode starts with the... <laughs> with the summit of all of the different uh, places, cities, and regions of Equestria, with all their different representatives. And the opening ceremony uh, with the four princesses and Spike that unveils the statue that each one of the uh, each one of the representatives has helped build. And each one of the gems represents a place in Equestria. I wasn't expecting there to be that many gems. <laughs> yeah, Equestria is a big place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, even if each one of those is a city, that's, I don't know, is that like more states than the U.S. already? I don't know. I didn't, didn't even bother counting, but it I'm, looks big. I'm sure someone in the fandom counted, as they did with Twilight's new chandelier. <laughs> I wonder, are there any crystal gems in there? <laughs> <laughs> we are the crystal gems. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to go <laughs> I will say that design. I need to look at some still shots of it before I could actually make out the uh, the mayor style to it. The colors are so diverse that for a while there, the eye just keeps jumping. Mm. I couldn't make it out the first time I viewed the episode. And here we have the crystal statue of the ponies designed by Gaudi. <laughs> <laughs> but you also have to remember that the base is also considered. A piece of the um, pony, like or the statue, or whatever they call it. Like in hindsight, why make something like this? Like this because mm, I'm no artist or I'm no art guy. But I, when I see this, to me, this is just like uh, this is very um, well. Uh, nice try, little five year old. Maybe you should color in the line next time. That's what, that's what obviously, obviously, you don't know about Art Deco or Art Nouveau. Actually, this is a representation of the diversity in the land of Equestria. <laughs> because each one of the gemstones is unique, except for those that are all red or all green or all blue. But, you know, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's not so much equality as it is diversity, Monaco. <laughs> I know that, but it's just <sighs> that to me... Uh, how do I put this? I'm envisioning James in a beret right now. <laughs> uh, I cool. like the gems before it was cool. <laughs> but I, how do I put this? To me, when I see the pony statue, it looks nice. I really like her mane. <laughs> but in hindsight, no. It could have been done better, but I'm just nitpicking. Uh, well... I will say one of the positives of this episode overall is the audience of ponies. Mm. You see, we see some returning designs like, uh, what is it, fluffy clouds? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, uh, I see some crystal ponies, a mayor from Appaloosa, uh, wearing that cowboy outfit. That is a Griffin back. Mm-hmm. There's, a, is there, okay. And yet, hey, I, I need to point this out. It's a very minor thing, but I'll point it out. That Griffin grins in this episode and he has teeth. What? Really? People, he, people have been saying, hey, hippogriff shouldn't have teeth when my character grins. Well, who's the genetic impossibility now? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, it's still me. <laughs> <laughs> We're picking out problems with mythological creatures <laughs> because they have to be physiologically correct. Oh, yeah. Yes. There's a scene where she grins and they're teeth. Mm-hmm. All right. Is the- 
Is there anything about me that's correct? <laughs> uh, I see you'll soon find out. Well, it is clear that during the opening ceremonies, Twilight is sporting some major bugs under her eyes. Uh, because, like always, she tired herself from, uh, organizing this whole event. And poor Spike, he tries to, to thank everyone for coming to the ceremony, only to be interrupted by, Yeah, we love you, Princess Twilight! It's good to know that your toys dropped the price. They are only 99 from the Hasbro store. Go get them now, kids. Beg your parents for it. <laughs> uh, and he's like, ah, oh, it's good to be the princess, isn't it? Oh, they established the conflict for the episode. Yay. I wonder where this will come, this will get to. And then they, and then they do, and they do a callback to the princess promenade of G3. <laughs> really? In that, in that movie, uh, there is a spike. Mm-hmm. Spike is, oddly enough, the flagship character of the franchise. There's a Spike. He is trying to train a princess, and he says, everyone wants to be a princess, even me. <laughs> and he's still a dude, I might, I, I remind you. So, like, well, learn something new about you today, Spike. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's his previous reiteration. Not sure about this one. Well, uh, uh, I think this episode's iteration, at least, he wants to be a princess again. <laughs> oh. There's... Notice he says Princess Spike, not Prince. <laughs> well, you, you, we have Prince, um, shining, so, I, I, no comment. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a real prize. I, I'm sorry, but at, at the time of this recording, the only Prince I support is Prince Big Macintosh. <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> think he's Prince, I think he's Princess. We will get to that one, and when we get to that one, it's going to be the best thing in the world. <laughs> oh, that one. Oh, I can't wait to talk about that one. That, that, one, one. that one is going to be one of the long episodes, but no, we're, we're not talking about that one. We're talking about this one. Mm. You can tell that we don't want to talk about this one. We want to talk about the other episodes. Can we talk about the other episodes? No, we have to talk about this one. We have a duty with our oh, followers. Please. We need to do this. Uh, spe- speaking of duty, let's talk about the rest of the episode. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's talk about the rest of the episode. <laughs> so, uh, we then cut to the room where Rarity stayed on in, in Sweet and Elite, which it seems to be the default room for anyone to stay at. Either that or they really don't want, they really want to recycle the assets for this room. It's a nice room. <laughs> where Caden, when Cadence brings Twilight to Spike, uh, just to look after her, because she is, she has been like without sleep for like three days or something like that. Mm-hmm. And of course she, <laughs> she falls asleep on a pile of books and makes a pillow out of them. Yeah. I'm sure that's how she really wants to spend most of her nights. Oh, wow. Can I, can I just mention that I hope they keep doing that, that thing of Twilight uh, uh, turning uh, regular objects into pillows. Like the same thing she did with the pancakes. She did it with the books. She's the cutest when she does that. Yeah, this is adorable. This is she's adorable. adorable. She's adorable. But yes, uh, uh, Spike is is like, oh, don't worry. I will make sure that nothing disturbs her. She's gonna have the best sleep ever. So he grabs telescope and starts uh, surveying to make sure that there is not a single sound to wake her up. So he gets confronted by. Uh, by a bird that he subsequently kicks out, and then he goes out to stop a polo match, and it's funny. Pony's playing polo. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I guess that's what happens when you don't have humans around. They just—it's—it's it's regular, isn't it? Isn't it like cricket when there is no horse riding? No, I'm a f- really. I'm a, I'm an American. We, if we're not starting to fight with our sports, it doesn't really matter. Not <laughs> really. Technically, polo is a sport where. A rider rides on a horse in or Segway and hit the ball to the goal on the opposite end of the field. But hey, ah, no comment on this one. I don't know sports. <laughs> in, all, in all honesty, this this whole segment feels like Murphy's Law. If it can go wrong, it will. As everything <laughs> is des- everything is designed to uh, make noise. How long have you been holding on that one? I've I've waited for this day. <laughs> well, <long> technically, <laughs> the, the fulfillment of my desires. I refuse to focus on how depressing that is. I really need better goals. Uh, oh, now I'm sad. Oh. But 
But here's here's the thing. It's like none of these ponies are willing to do anything unless the princesses say so. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so Spike uses says, you know, this is for Princess Twilight. Oh well, then I I have immediately gone into lockstep. Mm, well, but, it, it is something to be. Well, it's something honorable to be well told by a princess. Like, oh, it's a princess's rule. I must listen. So that's something, but. Yeah, I, I I see where this is going. But carry well, on. well, okay. There's there's that point that no that unless you have that authority, apparently you have no ponies won't listen. That's great. But the bigger thing is Spike's doing what Cadence asked him to do. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know. No one's gone over the the bigger picture with him. Why that may water may needs to be fixed. Uh, why uh, ponies have to be clearing the leaves. Why on earth would you order? Flowers that made a dragon sneeze. Some, but I'm going to assume Twilight was at, on like the third day of sleep deprivation when she made that call. But uh, the thing is, we, we're meant to believe later that all of this was a mistake by Spike. And I think, no, he, he was doing the best he could with the information at hand. This is the fault of Cadence, Luna, and Celestia not overseeing the events after Twilight was out of commission. Well, I do agree with you. I do agree with you on that, but I do still put a, a lot of blame on Spike after he did his job. But if you do think about it at the same time, Spike is Twilight's number one assistant and only assistant. So he should have picked up on some of the details that Twilight have been planning or overheard something from the information he's gathered. So, well, if he's been ignoring most of the story or most of what Twilight has been discussing with ponies, then, well, he's at fault there too. I, well, we, we're making assumptions now because we don't know where Spike was at during this planning phase. He might have been helping Twilight write the notes. He may have been off running errands. We don't know. Yeah, at so, this point, we are completely in the blank. For all we know, he just got, got thrown into this situation. Yeah, so this is where, again, the episodes, it's asking us to believe one thing, but what we're, what, at least what I'm seeing is something very different, and there's that conflict going on in my head. You know, I think that we got used to the M.A. Larson style of writing, and when, when another writer takes care of that, we, we miss what M.A. Larson does. Um, I, okay, maybe you didn't notice, uh, and I'm speaking to the audience directly right now, I'm not speaking to you guys, maybe you did, but when uh, when Emil Larson writes an episode, he always uh, speaks about the outside of the episode. He is he has always done that, like, uh, uh, we know that Pinkie Pie has meetings with Twilight on Tuesdays, and we know that... Uh, uh, we know the backstory of Luna without having to watch anything other than Luna Eclipse... Or, uh, like, he always has backstory uh, when writing something. That's something not every other uh, writer does. Or if they do, it's not common practice for them. So, to have someone write something like this and not give us an explanation of how does Spike know about this or does Spike know about this at all, I think we got used to the backstory style of writing way too much. Yeah, I, I do agree with you on that because a quick family guy cutaway would have been sufficed to explain why Spike didn't know what was what was supposed to be going on. Twilight could have been talking to ponies and Spike could have been putting on some earphones and listening to some music mm-hmm. or eating gems or reading a comic to ignore the whole yeah. thing. That could have yeah. been easily explained. They could have cut, cut one of those uh, meetings with the other uh, with the other ponies that are going to ask Twilight for advice, just to give a little cutaway. Like you don't you don't need more than ten or five seconds, and that satisfies the narrative. But as it is right now, yeah, I can see where you're coming from, uh, Silver. That the, the 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 script suffers from that decision. Yes, but we we could go through every single event, but it's sort of repetitious. Spike wants someone to stop making noise. They're like, nah-uh. And then he says, yeah. oh, Princess Twilight. Oh! Until we get to probably the best characters in this whole episode. <laughs> yes. Yes, oh, I, I absolutely agree. 
Oh, don't you know those that, that Fargo pony's a, a cute one, eh? <laughs> she she is the best thing of this episode. This I think that's why I don't hate this episode all that much. <laughs> Any TV show that makes a reference to one of my absolute favorite movies of all time, uh, it has a free pass on my on my side. Like that gives it a, an automatic three stars out of five. <laughs> Because there is a Margie Gunderson pony in My Little Pony, and her cutie mark is a coffee. She dresses like like the brainier police uh, policeman, and she has that <laughs> adorable accent. <laughs> I love her. I love you, Margie. Uh, she's, she's, she's great. I love it. And and we see you too, New York stereotype pony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who has a, who has a pizza for a cutie mark because mm-hmm. Italian? Oh, oh well, ju- well, just don't let him near Donald Trump. <laughs> he'll he'll need a knife and fork. Oh God! Oh, you don't need to worry about that anymore. He got fired. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, 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 but yes, the these two guys, and that's what starts a, a new chain of events. Mm-hmm. Because this is the moment where Spike realizes that he can make decisions without having to consult Twilight for for uh, advice. Well, he did try to consult Twilight, asking what to do yeah. with these two ponies, and Twilight... You just need to put the hay in the apple and eat the candle. <laughs> that was so cute. <laughs> I, 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 tr- I tried that. Oh, how was it? How did it go? Up. It opened up the mysteries of the universe. I finally understood the answer to the to the ultimate question. Why do they put hot dogs in packs of six but buns in packs of nine? I got the answer, man, and it'll blow your mind. <laughs> but then I but then I watched this episode and was too angry to remember. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh-uh. But uh I'm afraid this is the point where we reach that infamous line I referenced earlier. The princess is always right. Mm. And I want I, I guess this is the point where I should expound on what I mean when this episode is doing a negative to this idea of the princess. Okay, so please re- please bear with me on this. Who here has heard of a guy named Carl Jung? No, I know. Jung me. is that is that um, a philosopher or a or a, a scientist? A little of both, and props okay. to you, James. Props. Uh, he was a student of Sigmund Freud, uh, and while Freud believed that uh, psychology should be a science. Jung was more a fan of studying what he called a cultural unconscious, that the stories we tell from our cultures are meant to be represent how to grow up, the, the healthy life. Every archetype you can name is somehow representative of a person or a, li- or a lifestyle. So, you know, the great king can be a CEO. The young prince is a teenager waiting for ascension. What do you think a princess is supposed to represent? Uh, eternal youth. Very much. People say everybody, every, every girl wants to be a princess, but really it's every princess is supposed to represent little girls. So what, so here's this image we're presenting now of ponies automatically agreeing with anything the little princess says. Her word is law no matter what. And they never raise a question to it. And I've often wondered, you know, how does Celestia rule? We see her, the benefits of what she does off screen, but it's a very prosperous world. And I've always kind of wondered, well, does she, is she accommodating? Does she have to deal with difficult or stubborn ponies? This episode says, nah, if you're, if you've got the title, you are automatically right and everyone will all, will follow your orders without question. And I think that's, and granted, you have to simplify things for a young audience. You know, I'm not expecting an economic tree, tree stis or anything like that. But when you dumb it down to the princess said so, everyone falls in lockstep. I think you're doing kids a disservice. There's no challenge for growth. Mm. That's true. That's true. Because the first scene with um, the Fargo ponies, the, they, they question about things like, what? Share the room? Is that a good idea? Well, if Princess Twilight said so, and that that raises up so many questions, like why did Twilight book those double book those rooms? Like what? Well, I, I will say that that uh, this friendship summit is anyone who's run a convention knows 
is probably identifying, like, I feel your pain, Twilight. Yeah. Pe- yeah. Pe- there are mix-ups. There's a lot of moving components to keep track of. And people do come to you with the dumbest questions oh, yeah. or, or oh, issues. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They, but, so I can't fault the episode on accurately reflecting a big gathering. But it's taken the need to deal and adapt with other individuals out of it. Mm. But one thing, like, okay, I need to bring up a plot hole here. Starting from the Fargo ponies, they got double booked. Logical step is to console with Twy, get her response. Didn't get it. Look at the schedule. Look at schedule, see how, and go according to the schedule and see what can be moved around and whatnot. If Spike does that from the very beginning, everything could have been done proper. Well, that's how I see things, and that's how I put logic into everything I see. So yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't call it so much a plot hole as much as it is a hindsight. Like in hindsight, Spike should have done that, but Spike's an idiot, and he didn't, and he didn't do it. Well, or he could be a, a baby track. <sighs> yeah, but that's you cannot, you can use that excuse so many times before it, before it stops being valid. I don't care if Spike is a baby dragon. He is not a dummy in this scene. He's he's acting like a total dummy throughout the entire episode, but not because he is trying to hurt somebody, but because he doesn't have all the information. Clearly, the princesses haven't informed him about everything. Okay, I'm going to share something of a personal experience with you. And uh, when I was working at this hotel in 2010... Uh, the, the owners will leave me in charge of the night shift and I will have the hotel to my own. Uh, before leaving, they will give me a list of things to do. They will give me a list of regulations and of things that I have to look after. Uh, that way they will cover themselves in case something was wrong. They will say, why didn't you do this? We gave you the list for it. But also they ensure that the list is being done. And that's what they do. That is the least they should do. You need to leave somebody supervising uh, uh, the the trainee. I'm, I was still in training when I was doing that, but that is the least you can you have to do. Nobody, nobody gives a spike a list of things to do. Nobody gives a spike a a a, a, a to do list or anything. If Twilight had been more awake, I, I can imagine her doing that. Mm-hmm. Apparently, lists and regulations are not. In the, <laughs> they are not in the vocabulary of of the other three princesses. And in the end, I think Cadence was at fault for this. Oh, I, I'm going to fault Cadence for a lot when her role <laughs> increases. Uh, but can I just say that pony shows make things weird when you're talking about the plot hole in hindsight. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. No, not, not yes. Let's, let's... I'm so, you're all thinking it. Now. Oh, God. I have made it inappropriate. <laughs> uh, you and you cannot that. censor that, Norman, because it's not a swear word. I Silver, know. you do know that you have fans listening to this, right? Oh, Flip, yeah. <laughs> uh, someone asked, like, last week's episode, someone asked, like, what did Silver say in that scene where I censored it out? I clearly said that you played the Frozen song, but somebody needed to ask. <laughs> Wait, you you cut the Frozen song? Norman, Norman, hey. I am disappointed. Hey, I am not going to take a risk by the YouTubes or by Disney, no. The YouTubes, are, I say, sir, I say. <laughs> I, uh, won't, I won't, you can call yourself a princess, I won't accept this ruling. I'm not. <laughs> Although, uh, oh, and also, just looking through uh, the episode again, you realize the real tragedy of this sequence where Spike is giving ponies the thumbs up and thumbs down? Uh, what? If Twilight had been awake, she could have seen Minuet and Lemon Heart sooner. <gasps> Technically, Twilight mm. will still got no idea who she, who they are. But we could have gotten the ball rolling. Oh, yeah, so true. But it could have been a, it could have been a good, a, a, a good, like, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, oh. at the episode, at the, at the, uh, episode that will happen in a couple of episodes, oh, actually. Well. You know what? I got a lot of things to say, but let's give it that for the, well, that episode. Uh, 
Look, all I'll say is one testament to amending fences is that it's putting a, an interesting spin on a previous episode, i.e. this one. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. so that's enjoyable, but I am, I think I'm digressing into many a different thing. Yeah. Let it go, <laughs> let it go. Uh, oh, great, copyright strike, there you go. Uh, but anyway, let's get back on the list and talking about lists. Spike's getting a list. Uh, I don't think he should get that list. <laughs> Well, I guess the next part is after the water main, Cadence comes by and actually says, you're abusing your powers. That's not right. Okay, bye. <laughs> I mean, this is this is what kills me. Cadence, I've waited so long for you to be a royal, to be a leader, to actually do something. And she's always just sort of wagging, shaking her hoof and saying, no, no, that's not what you're supposed to do. And then just going off to do, uh, get her main done. Uh, but you know what? This is kind of counter, I won't say counterproductive, but this is kind of a difference in characters from the comic and from this. And what I meant by, by what I meant by the comics was in, uh, remember the Shining Armor Cadence arc where Cadence is very gun ho to know information about Shiny from Twilight and the way they plan stuff. To me, when I see that, like, Cadence is a very hands-on person who wants to get things right. But in this episode, the way she's acting is like, Spike, don't do... Are you sure that's a good idea? And Spike says, Yeah, it's okay. Okay, let's see what you learn. I just, I, it would have meant so much if she had tried to take the reins and say, okay, I'll help you get things strained out. And, uh, I'll expound on that a little more at the, at the end of the review. But all I can say is I've, I've almost given up on Cadence in the show as a character. She'll, she'll, they'll tell us that she's doing great things, but we'll never get to see it. Hmm. May I say that Cadence has disappointed me a lot throughout this season, and it kills me to say that, but that is true. I remember one uh, sentence, that you, one quote that you, Silver, used, and it, st- it sticks with me ever since you said it. You relate the Crystal Empire to under- underutilization. I am starting to feel the same thing about Cadence. <laughs> Is was that part of the Crystal Empire? <laughs> yeah, because the way that they are, like, you can tell, you can tell what toys did good and what toys did bad, depending on how much they appear on screen after they are done promoting them. And even though we have seen Cadence in a couple more occasions, she has become the kind of character, uh, the kind of car- character that is like, and then Cadence is here, and then Cadence goes away, and Bye. she did nothing. And uh, it kills me because I still like Cadence. I think she was very awesome in season four. I thought she was really badass when she fought that tussle worm with Twilight in the uh, Three a Cloud episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Cadence of the comics is really fun, really enjoyable. She's a lot of, uh, she's, she's a joy to read, especially on the Cadence and Chain in Armor arc. They are not doing much with her in season five, despite how much we are seeing of her. And like this is what the second time that we have seen her this season. Mm-hmm. One of the yeah. one episode after the other. We saw her in episode one hundred, and she appeared again on episode one hundred one, and then again in one hundred two. She had one appearance after the other in a row, and she did nothing. Well, I I can't fault her for her role in episode one hundred. She was meant to be in the audience, and the episode was not asking that the princesses get involved with that monster fight. Mm-hmm. You know, no, that would you know that would have been cool. But this one, this, okay, uh, I haven't gotten to really talk about this in other places, but in Rainbow Rocks, you have that scene where Sunset and Twilight are talking about the pressure of their roles, uh, especially Twilight now being a princess. I love that scene mm-hmm. because it's, it's talking about the role and the stress and the demands that go with it. I like Twilight in, uh, Castle, Castle Sweet Castle where she's talking about how having this grand castle doesn't feel like home. They're they're talking about how it's not all perks. And that works because that's what the setting calls for. Here, we're get we're, I'm getting a little ahead, but Cadence says being a princess is hard work. But she's in a situation that requires her to work and she's not doing it. 
you can't give in this case now it's just lip service whereas you have the option to show action that scene on rainbow rocks you mean is the one in the in the kitchen right Yes, where Sunset Simmer is, is covering herself in whipped cream. Oh, wait, no, sorry, that's just... <laughs> <laughs> that's a fanfic you read, no. That's no, the but... best scene, that's the best scene in the movie, I agree. It is, it is, just followed by Human Mod. <laughs> and right when you thought the scene was going so well, they suddenly ruined it. Anyway, uh, this episode, this episode. This is but... episode. Yeah, uh, Spike is, uh, has his, like, little moment of ego. And it is a little moment because we only have, like, what, three or four, like, little serps where he's having a massage, he's having a, a crystal cupcake, he's being painted with a shirt off. Is it, is, okay. <laughs> and, and that's like, what, ten seconds of the overall episode? Usually when there is, uh, when there are episodes like this where a character abuses authority, it's a good size of the episode. Like I'm reminded of an episode of Recess mm. where the character of Goose Gritchwall, he goes crazy with power because he becomes like the king of the, the king of the playground. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And he spends like more than half of the episode going mad with power to the point that he commands the kids to build a a uh, pit to dig out cookies. <laughs> and uh, at the end of the episode, like, he relinquishes the, the, the crown, and the characters don't forgive him right away. They actually, they tell him, if you do that again, mm, finger walking. Uh, that's, that, that's not this. That's not this, uh, this moment in the episode. That's like, what, 10 seconds out of a 22 minute long episode. It's not enough to sell the fact that Spike is being, you know, abusing his authority. And, and again, the weird thing is all these things he's doing will have no consequence. He hasn't, we never see that he's inconvenienced the summit with this. Everything that's about to come into play, he did while trying to help Twilight sleep. And again, I, I, I just stress, you know, he didn't have the whole picture. He was doing what Cadence asked. That's why I can't fault him as much well, as the episode wants me to. To a point, because when initially he did his job, but he took it one step further where he didn't need to, which is helping Twilight with the list. From that point on, it's all on him. Like, he didn't need to do that. Although, Mike, but did any of those thumbs up, thumbs down decisions really come into play in this, you know, the, the come up and scene? Well, technically, he didn't need to do that too. But in his mind and the mindset at the current time was, hey, I'm helping Twilight. Uh, get some sleep. So, yeah, let me make the decision for her. And the list there was taking it one step too far. Although now I think about it, why can't they just move Twilight to a quieter place? Yeah, true that. Uh, see, everything's founded on lies and deception. I don't know what's real anymore. <laughs> uh, it's a show made of ones and zeros. None of these characters are real, and you will never hug a pony in your life. And I think I saw it too. <laughs> the, yeah. <laughs> oh, he just got he, he just got the reference. I, I just got the joke. Yes. <laughs> it's, oh, that moment! That moment where you hear the 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 yeah. ears click. Oh, but anyway, uh, flo- flooded room. Cadence is powerless against water. Well, before flooded room, like oh, sorry, don't mind me. Ignore. Yeah, this co- this is where the, the the chain of events that I was talking before happens. This is where all the decisions that Spike makes uh, wrong end up biting him in the butt. Is that <laughs> uh, <laughs> Polo Ball goes knocks the trees, opens up the water pipe that fills up the entire room and ruins everything. And uh, yeah. just to top it all off, <laughs> the flowers that give him allergies. Uh, make him sneeze to the point that he destroys the statue. Oh, so yeah, no. everything is ruined, everything is terrible, everything sucks. Oh no. Everything is awesome. Nope. Everything is cool when you're part of the team. See, I'm gonna bring in every annoying song. <laughs> because <laughs> see this is this is what you get. I will not be censored. <laughs> ah, yes. hey, you can sing to your heart's content, but don't play <laughs> songs. That's that's all. 
Well, as right. they step inside, the angry mob of uh, formed by all the representatives, they are like, who, t- who took all these decisions? It was Princess Twilight. Oh, let's give her a piece of her mind. Rubble, 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 rubble. I, I, I got to say, they're lucky to live in Equestria. You bum rush a princess's k- tower, you're going to get the royal guard and the guillotine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Talking about that also, where are the guards? We don't see one at all. They're off. They're having a good cry with shining armor when they realize just how useless they are, and that Celestia has a secret service in place rather than use them. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was that episode, awesome. Yeah. Episode one hundred still having an impact, and an episode later. That was an awesome episode. <laughs> yeah, can we talk about that episode again, please? <laughs> no, we need to deal with this one. It's almost over. No. It's almost- Almost there. Almost there. We could kind of skip ahead. I mean, Fancy Pants. Oh, my favorite stallion in Cantalot. <laughs> Even he's not acting that cool right now. Well, it's understandable because he is the representative for Cantalot. His city. He's he's proud about it, and he be damned that a princess derp really hard to make it the worst event ever. And poor Twilight doesn't know anything. It's and How like, dare you make my city look bad? Don't you know that I was embossed by John Cleese? Ah. <laughs> but the, the thing is, poor Twilight waking up to an angry mob. Like, what did I do this time? I'm sure Emily Larson gave me only one wing this time. Well, like you say, this is, this is a typical Tuesday for Twilight now. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, I mean, well, a lot of folks have raised the issue that Spike was trying to duck out a window. That is true. Like, why? From a, from a, what? Three, four story tower. Not, not, Spike. I want to talk to you about this thing called gravity. It is not your friend. <laughs> but it's a really good movie. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure the guy can handle a fall like that. He has fallen from higher places and he's okay. It's fine. But yeah, I mean, what a, what a scumbag. He's trying to run away. <laughs> <laughs> like nope, out the window. That's actually a pretty funny, f- pretty funny visual gag. Actually, oh. it's like, well, when in doubt, uh, when in doubt, abandon thread. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing to do here. But he does, he does um, fess up to his mistake and apologizes to every pony in the hall uh, room. And this is my problem with the episode. This Uh-oh. right here. Uh oh, I want to hear this, please. Mm-hmm. This, this right here. So, you have this show, which it, it likes to present conflict, it likes to present problems that are very close to real life. And one thing that it has never dealt with, and that will probably de- never deal with, if, especially after how this episode ends, is how sometimes after the problem and the conflict is dealt with, the other people that were involved, some of them, might not feel like forgiving you. They might not feel okay to, uh, to let it go. Don't make the joke, please. Or they, they don't see it in their power to put it behind them. Like, this is too much for them. We are not going to forgive you for this. Spike committed a lot of mistakes. He made a lot of mock-ups. And in the end, he did try to make things better. But he really didn't. Like yeah, he he. It, we can like blame the guy for like uh, uh, not telling the truth and making decisions on his own and all that. And he was acting in misinformation. But in the end, he he got forgiven. He got forgiven way too quick. Like from a writing point of view, I think that is not correct. There there should be a point. There should be an episode where the characters are like, yeah, we know you did wrong, but we are not forgiving you yet. Like the closest we got was three hugger. Telling to Discord, can you please give me a moment before I hug you from a from a place of truthness? Like, really, I don't feel like forgiving you yet. Mm-hmm. Like, that is the closest this show is going to get to that. To authenticity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but that's I, the thing is that I, I I don't like I don't like this part. This is Spike should have been like at least f- from a from a karma karmic point of view punished a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like, this is not enough. Let's see. My opinion. It, it, and it, and in my view, this is what happens. This, this is going to come into play with party pooped as well. When you're a princess, because that's what this is trying to say, you'll be praised when everything goes right, but when things go wrong, much like in games ponies play, 
you have, it's someone else's fault. There's no, uh, they call it respondent superior. The, bo- the boss takes responsibility for the subordinate's actions. And I think there needs to be an element of that as well. Twilight and Cadence, Spike made mistakes, but they're the ones who first dropped the ball. Mm, I won't say Twilight, but... I don't know. She, if she held all the planning so close to the chest that no one else knew how to arrange things... Uh, yeah, that's true, too. She did not do a good job as a communicator. And that's my problem with this episode. It's asking us to say everything is Spike's fault, but he's surrounded by others who had greater responsibility and didn't follow through. Well, when you put it that way, and when you look at when you look at it from that standpoint, yeah, it's true. I do agree with you all when you say that Twilight has fault here, Cadence has fault, and Spike was at fault here too, because it takes more than one person to make a mistake in this kind of situation and what we're given yeah it's clearly that there's more there's more than one at fault here so and but then spike nearly sneezes and we cut away like the sopranos yeah well before we jump we'll jump to the end spike tries to build the crystal pony again not the crystal pony from the yeah is the is the the crystal statue yeah the crystal uh, statue the, yeah the, yeah. yeah, the James yeah. statue. Yeah, he tries to build that again, and every pony lends in a hand. And in this one memorable moment, like everybody's in harmony, yay! And Spike almost knees, and we cut to the end. Yeah, but think so, about how they reach this moment of like, oh, harmony. They are together. This is so nice. Look at that. They are being friends. They are working together. And I'm like, yeah, but you know where you this this shouldn't have happened, like. <laughs> this literally shouldn't have happened because they don't, they, they are together and they are working together because of the many mistakes that have been committed to, to get there. Like, yeah, you're reaching a nice conclusion, but at what price, at what cost? Like, that's, that's, that's the issue. The, that's the, that's, I think, the, 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 the problem with this one is that, that, a moment that is supposed to be sweet and nice and oh look at all of them working together in harmony it's it, it's not that genuine uh, like I said my opinion my opinion I, well I, I share that opinion and when Cadence says oh I dedicate this to all the ponies who contribute it's like Cadence please stop talking <laughs> please, please stop <laughs> I'm very cross at you right now I don't want you to claim the moral high ground mm. when you haven't done anything yeah uh and Luna and Celestia are like chilling by the pool. I don't know. Uh, probably they they've done this for a thousand years now. Now it's their turn to do to relax. Hey, uh, didn't you hear like a sneezing sound followed by several explosions? Yeah, they turn take it out. Boombox. What? I couldn't hear you. Wait, I, actually, I can imagine Celestia. Oh, good. Maybe this friendship summit will actually be entertaining for once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, knowing oh. Celestia, I could see that happening. Uh. But- you know what really, at the end, after all that is said and done, mm-hmm. what really, one other element that bugs me is that everything was in place for a better story. Mm, true that. And to, if I may propose just an alternate uh, tale, we go through the element. Uh, Twilight is overworked. She needs sleep. Cadence wants to take over the final stages, but Twilight's notes have grown so complex since fullhood she can't read them. The only person who can is Spike, because, well, from day one. From day one, exactly. So, Spike is now partnered with Cadence to go and meet each pony. And and Spike, who's doubting his own worth without being, you know, a big shot, sees how this is coming together by the work of everyone. And sure, by the end, a disaster happens and the, and the crystal statue is shattered. Mm. But, and then it's Spike's idea to rally everyone to fix it. Mm-hmm. There you go. You'd, Spike learns a lesson. He doesn't have to come off as the fool. Cadence gets to show her leadership. And the whole we're all in this together is more sincere. I really think that could have been a better story. Mm, but hey. You know, I, I agree. But here's the problem. Is that uh, when it comes to the interaction between fandom and the showrunners, 
there is like several years of distance between one uh, and the other. I will explain myself. Yeah. Uh, episode 100 proved that, yes, the writers and the ones working on the show, they do not read fan fiction, but they pay attention to what we do, and they know what we like. The most recent episode, we are recording this after episode 13 got premiered. That's mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the Princess's Dream of Magic Ship episode. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, we're giving spoilers here for you guys who haven't watched it. We're sorry, but... At one point on the episode, we do see the appearance of Princess Big Macintosh, mm -hmm. which is something that was created in 2013 by Pixel Kitties. Now, it is obvious that the, 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 the design and everything, they knew what they were referencing. They knew yeah. what they were drawing. So the guys who work on the show and the guys who produce the show, that Hasbro, DHX, every, DHX, every one of them, they are like, hey, the fans want to see this. We're going to work on doing this. And by the time that they finish it, we have shifted perspectives. A couple of years ago, everybody wanted to see more Spike episodes. <laughs> and now we are get now we are getting Spike episodes, but they are not the episodes that we wanted to see. By the time that we get, and now we are saying, uh, or like like you said, uh, Silver, maybe we should see a Spike episode doing this. If they were to listen to the big majority, or if this was like a big voice, I'm pretty sure we would end up seeing an episode like that. But by the time we get that episode, we're going to want to see an episode that is different to that. I have to disagree in that it's not a case of letting the fandom write a Spike episode for you. It's a question of, we want an episode that conveys this message. How do we convey it? I think this episode lost sight of what it was trying to promote. I do see that too. No, it to I to yeah, I, to I totally agree. No, I totally agree. It's not that... I don't mean to say it's like, we want to see a Spike episode. Is that the the... The guys who work on the show, they are like, we need to keep making money. What is making money right now? Oh, they want Spike. Oh, Spike episodes. Making Spike episodes is going to net us a lot of, uh, a lot of money, a lot of views. Then they do a Spike episode that is not the one that we want to, that we want to see. Because the message is not well, that, all that well conveyed, is not all that well written, and is not all that well executed. Also, you have to remember that this episode was written by a newcomer. So his tempo, his feel for the character is a bit different from the other senior writers. To say that th is this episode totally trash, not worth my time? No, I would not say really. that. I I would say that there were memorable moments in this episode, and I would pick out a few if I were to well, if I was forced to. But oh, as an overall episode, this was just. Okay, it would be around 5 to 6 out of 10. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. It, you could go worse in other episodes, but usually I'm at a 7 or... I'm usually at a 7 because I enjoy it. So it's okay. I, I do see a few things which we will touch upon later, I guess, when we talk about Final Thoughts and what we like and dislike. I, have, I actually think we should go on to final thoughts now. What do you think, Silver? Should we? Uh, all right. Well, it is the start of a new uh, uh, writer, and there can be a shakedown period. I, I think back to Mysterious Mare Do Well. Oh, and, yeah. And how much frustration that caused. Mm -hmm. However, at the same time, when I, can pr when I propose an alternate storyline, pretty much within three minutes of watching the episode, the hope is that a group of professional writers could do likewise. And while this may be a newcomer's first attempt, he did have the support and oversight of other more experienced staff members. I feel like th this didn't enjoy enough uh, peer review. Well, you know, when you say professional, professional before meant that they had more experience. Right now, nowadays, professional means they only get paid more than the rest. <laughs> But sometimes, Silver, you have to remember that when a person writes something and hands it over to Hasbro, Hasbro has the final say in the script. Maybe he wrote something to what we had in mind, but Hasbro said, no, we don't like this, change it. So that could have uh, been affected too. Well, that that is indeed a possibility, but we're also speculating mm. on things. We are I mean, speculating. Yeah. I have, plus, we're, we're saying this in the aftermath of M.A. Larson disavowing oh. uh, Magical Mystery Cure. Oh, uh, that was whoa! No, that that one, that one. He he mentioned that on the show too. Like 
I don't want to bring this up a lot, but we did talk to him. Hasbro is going to kill him. Hasbro is going to no, kill him. He did, he did say this. Like, he wrote the script expecting this episode to be the final episode. When they got info that they got season four running, uh, Megan McCartney did most of the rewrites. Well, go look at the, what you call this, EQDs. I, I think, um, a video was posted up or something like that. So, yeah. Final thoughts on Princess Spike, Norma. Final thoughts. Yes. Uh, but I don't think, I don't think Silver was over. But yeah, well, yeah. well, okay. I, obviously, I have expressed, expressed great disappointment because in terms of themes, in terms of setup, in terms of trying to say to kids, hey, this is what it's like to be in charge, I, I just feel it didn't do them a service. I won't say that it's irredeemable. There are cute, fun characters and, uh, you know, you get to see a great visual variety. But ultimately, I think this is an episode you could skip and not suffer any ill effects. Well, as so for me, I, like I mentioned before, I'm, I like this episode. This episode is pretty okay. A few eye candy here and there. The story is, well, I'll take it or leave it. But what, I'm surprised that we didn't mention any of the background ponies. Like, we do see Andy and Katie in this one. <laughs> Uh, what? I, I'm sorry. Yeah, they're in there. They're uh-huh. where? They're, they're part of the the mob bum rushing the tower. Mm-hmm. But I'm sorry. J- you know, this is the thing. Fans winks or shout outs to the fandom. They can make an episode fun, but they can't make it good. Yeah. But, but I'm saying this is from my point of view. Like when I see the episode and the eye candy comes up to me, hey, I'm okay with this. It. Gives it a plus one, but in the overall scheme of things, is the story good? Eh, it could be rework, but hey, I do see like Andy Katie, the Fresh Prince Pony. I do also see who else? Like the Griffin. Like that Griffin is cool. I like the stripes on that one. It's a cross between a hawk and a tiger. So that's cool. And other uh-huh. things like so that's cool I, I technically like this episode and the nerd pony with the Jempo gen statue design she's interesting and james you really <laughs> didn't see andy and katie yeah i i just looked at i just looked at it yes there they are there they are <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so cool <laughs> i am so glad that they actually put themselves in the in the background that's awesome yeah or, those, or those a, guys those guys deserve it or a friend put them in you know, always, mm, always yeah. a possibility who and, knows? And there's a Van Gogh pony too, so yeah, that's that too. <laughs> so, uh, in my opinion, I can, may I give my, uh, mm-hmm. final Go thoughts ahead. on this one? Well, this is still watchable. I, like, if I were to, like, do a marathon of, like, th- this is what I always say, like, if I do a marathon of My Little Pony and I start watching season five, will I skip this episode? No. No, I won't. I mean, it's still watchable. I can still have it in the background, not paying too much attention to it. Like I said, the Winnie Apple is representative is the best part of that episode because, come on, Margie Gunderson, one of the best characters in fiction. She is now a pony and she's absolutely cute. Like, I want a plushie of her. She's awesome. But I don't think it does too much of a service for Spike. Uh, however, I think as Spike episodes go, this is much better than Dragon Quest, I don't think it's as... Uh, this episode is not as bad as... Uh, God, Spike at your service. You want a bad Spike episode? Spike at your service is the poster child for bad Spike episodes. Like, great Applejack episode, but Spike is terrible in that one. It's not nearly as good as Equestria games. Uh, not by a long shot. Uh, it needs more like ability to get on that same level, but it is in the middle ground. Like it is not terrible, it is not bad. It's just, eh, <laughs> eh. That's it. That's that's my opinion. Well, I have to be honest. I'm surprised. I thought Dragon Quest for Spike was a pretty decent episode. Uh, uh, it's a personal opinion. When it comes to Dragon Quest, I always thought that the that the entire episode is great until we get to the Dragon Grounds and then it turns out to be a really badly written teenager comedy with all the teenagers being horrible and flatlined. Like one dim- they're not one dimensional, zero dimensional. The dragons are diametrically opposed to their designs. Like their designs are cool, awesome and innovative. Their personalities are terrible. Like they are the most stock, uninspired, unoriginal teenagers. 
you can imagine. Or maybe I just hate teenagers, which can totally can totally be the the thing here. Don't don't watch Power Rangers. Ah, <laughs> uh, Madeline, teenagers, millennials. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Who do they think they are? Back in my day, we were rigged up with winding cassette tapes with a big pen. But yeah, that's that's my conclusion on a Princess Spike. I'd still rewatch it. I'd give it a pass, but hey, you're right. It's not teeth pullingly painful or anything. Mm-hmm. It, it ain't. It ain't that bad. It ain't that bad. It ain't that good either. But it then I'll give it a seven out of ten. I will give it a six. Actually, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> hey, you know my oh. limit point, man. Like. A good episode is a 10. An okay episode is a 9. A bad episode is a 5. Norman is super positive. I am more harsh when it comes to that. And I just say I'd, I'd, I'd give it a skippable. Mm. Yeah. This one is skippable. Press I... A to skip cutscene. No, well, for me, I would just say <laughs> that stick with it if you want to see Cute Twilight. If you want to see Cute Twilight, go to Derpy Buru and filter the Cute Twilight tag. <laughs> Search for Adorkable. And then I uh, oh sure oh, wow that pony sure loves book. Oh yeah. That's a tag in Derpy Buru, believe it or not. I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> that pony sure loves books. That is an actual uh, tag on Derpy Buru, oh. and it's just full of Twilight hugging books, reading books, loving books. Like according to this book, I am adorable. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, but well, we're the, buying is, time now. <laughs> yeah, uh, I just gotta wonder though: is there a is there a tag that says? You can have gun. Oh God! But then you know what? I think, there, I think there's. I think there might be. There are people who has the weirdest tags in the history of the planet. Well, that was Princess Spike. Well, uh, that was for today's episode review. So next time we're going to be reviewing uh, a comic, not an episode of the TV show, because now that we have the dreaded hiatus in the middle of the season. I think it's a good idea to mix up again, review an episode, a comic, and then an episode, and keep going until we run out of either, which will take less than I was expecting, actually. But yes, next time we're going to be reviewing the Friends Forever issue number 14, starring Princess Luna and Spike. More Spike talk for those of you who didn't have enough with today's review, which is written by Jeremy Whitley, with art by Agnes Garbowska. Now... What would we be saying about this episode, about this comic, I mean? Well, you can only find out on the next review. See you guys next time. Thank you so much for listening and have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Adios. No. All right. <laughs> no. Well, what happened? I, I'm hitting the button, but... Ah. <laughs> Ah, uh, <laughs> yay! He, he derped! Sound, he derped! Sound machine, how could you? <laughs> Technical difficulties! <laughs> <laughs>